2020 has been a rough year for everybody. Lockdowns, the beaches are closed down, we can't go to schools, we can't do anything. Clearly, barbershops are closed down. But here at the Coach's Box, we're going to bring you lots of holiday cheer. And the good news is, that includes Santa hats to cover up your terrible lids. Hello and welcome sports fans to our season-ending holiday edition of the Coach's Box presented by Monster Hydro. I'm your host, Rich Lamborn, and as you can see, we're coming to you from the friendly, festive confines of the AVP offices here in Fountain Valley, California. 2020 has been a rough year for everyone, we know, but we're going to do our best to end 2020 on a high note. All year long, you guys have done a wonderful job of sending us in your well-thought-out, heartfelt questions Regarding the sport of volleyball, we've also encouraged a little bit of lightheartedness and maybe even heckling of the host, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's kind of where we'd like to start today because we did get a couple of those types of comments. One of which came from Jace underscore Marley, which, uh, I mean, how you misspell Marley, I'm not sure. Poker or CrossFit, which one do you prefer watching on YouTube? Fair question, Jace. I actually prefer to study the AVP library, which is extensive on YouTube. If you haven't checked out some uh, old school matches, they're wonderful. You can see all the new stuff as well. Uh, it's an amazing way to study the game. Uh, but to be fair to the question, I prefer to, to watch poker, try and learn that, and then when it's time to work out, I go to the CrossFit Games and try and get some motivation. So thank you, Jace Marley, for that, what I assume was a dig at me. Uh, our next question comes from at Casey Pat, and lest you guys confuse that with the living AVP legend Casey Patterson, who is not only a Manhattan Beach Open champion, uh, a, a 2016 Rio Olympian, the Casey Pat we're referring to here is a solar energy proponent and a uh, newly crowned pickleball champion with all the Wilson pickleball gear you could ever want to have. He says, how do you get your rear delts bigger? <laughs> Thank you, Casey. That's, that's a very uh, pertinent question to the sport of volleyball, as we all need to use our shoulders. The legitimate, serious answer to that question is there's a German volleyball player named Yoni Erdmann who has just a shelf of a rear delt. And, uh, I mean, I think I saw him one time drink a beer, rest his glass on his shoulder, drink another beer. Uh, he was my inspiration. I work hard on it, try and maintain my consistency, and I'm hoping to bring that rear delt game to the pickleball court and take you down soon, Casey. Thank you for your submission. Let's get to the serious questions. We had some great submissions this week. Let's go first to Daphne. I was wondering if you had any drills or tips that I could use for going forward instead of taking negative steps to the side or backwards. Thanks for your time. Daphne, thank you for your question. Uh, that is a wonderful question, and I appreciate your angelic voice in saying it. I could listen to that all day long and just feel endlessly soothed. Uh, I, I do have some ideas on how that, that's a very common problem uh, in volleyball players, not going too far to the side, and certainly not going backwards when trying to receive balls. Uh, let me tell you what I like to do with my guys, uh, my guys being Jake and Taylor, of course. I'll just draw you a little diagram here. We start with kind of a progressive kind of mindset. We start very, very simply, even professional level guys. I'm just, we call it bowling, where I'm just underhand tossing balls uh, left and right to the guys so that they can kind of groove in their footwork. So if this is me here, and this is, let's say, Jake, since he's our right-sider. I'm just tossing balls over the net one way and then the other way and encouraging him to practice that good footwork where he's ending up on a lead leg. He's just kind of working that uh, mind-muscle connection and that muscle memory so that he gets that footwork grooved in. And the kind of the thought process there is 
that I, I layer on difficulty, if that makes sense, Daphne. I start very simply so that I'm not worried about the result and how difficult this ball coming at me is going to be. I, that's very, very simple. So I can just think about my footwork and trying to drill that into my head and my muscles that that's how I want to move. Then we kind of go to the next step. Let's say I'll move over to Taylor now over here on the left side and I'll get on a little bit of a ladder because I'm fairly short at 6'3", so I need, I need the extra help. And I'll spin some balls off that ladder kind of the same way. So the concept is the same, but we're, we're adding a, a degree of difficulty, so to speak. And that way, Taylor can work that with a little bit more difficulty. Okay? And then we progress to some live serves where I'm, I'm trying to work the guys left and right and see as we, as we layer on those degrees of difficulty if we've properly grooved that footwork. If that makes sense. Uh, and so that's kind of my, to sum it up, that's kind of my answer for you, Daphne, is that start very simply, get comfortable with the footwork so that it becomes sort of second nature, and then layer on that difficulty and see if, see if that holds up. Okay, but don't be afraid to do it kind of easy at first. Sometimes we think that, oh, you know, these free balls are, are too easy. I'm not learning much, but that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. That's where we groove that muscle memory, and that's so very critical when things get difficult. Okay, Dabney, thank you very much for your question. I hope, I hope we did a decent job of answering it there for you. All right, next question, let's go to Kevin. Happy holidays, this is Kevin from Las Vegas. My question is, what do you think about the European teams incorporating more jump setting into their play? Kevin from Las Vegas, clearly a Raiders fan. The autumn wind is a Raiders. Uh, wonderful question. We're seeing a lot of variety offensively, uh, not only in the men's game, but in the women's game as well, particularly in the international game. And I think it's just kind of a function of necessity almost, Kevin. Uh, blockers are so big, take up so much court, that teams are forced to find ways to make those blockers move, give themselves some sort of an advantage offensively. And it is this constant... Uh, evolvement of the game. Uh, blockers get too big, offenses are forced to adjust. Now the offenses are adjusting, the blockers are going to be forced to figure out a way to chase them down and make the right reads. Is this guy setting? Is he hitting? Uh, and so it, it continues to ratchet up the level of the game. I think it's, it's wonderful. It's obviously very exciting uh, for those of us that are fans of the game uh, because it creates these open net situations where these big physical athletes can absolutely tee off on balls, which is, is great for uh, spectatorship. Uh, so I think it's wonderful, especially when you see people doing it at such a high, high level. Uh, Kevin, thank you for being funkalicious, like your shirt says, and thank you for your question. All right, let's go to our next question, this time from Rebecca. Let's hear what she has to say. Hi, Coach. My name's Rebecca, and I was wondering, what inspired you to become a coach? Thank you for your time. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you for your question, and thank you for your amazing hair. It's beautiful. Why did I decide to be a coach? Uh, well, I think that as a player, I was never you know, the greatest athlete or the biggest guy or, or anything like that, but I did feel like I had a, a decent mind for the game, uh, some decent insights into how and why things should be done. And so kind of the desire to share that with other people. I was very fortunate to be coached by a lot of great minds in the sport. And so the opportunity to pass along some of that knowledge uh, was something that was very intriguing to me. Uh, and, and also just kind of that concept of continual learning uh, was also very enticing. Uh, beach volleyball is something I played a lot as a kid, but certainly not at a professional level. Uh, and, and so the opportunity to learn as I go and kind of constantly be learning is also something that's very appealing to me. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of in being a coach. All right, let's go to our last question here from Solrab. Let's hear what he's got to say. Hey, Coach Rich. It's your boy, Sorop, down in sunny San Diego. Uh, wondering if you had any tips or suggestions for 
um, any types of workouts that you can do to help prevent injury and keep your body in the tippiest of top shape. So Rob, first of all, I love San Diego. That's where I started playing the game of volleyball. Uh, congratulations to you for living in sunny San Diego, as you said. Uh, this is a great question because we're all trying to avoid injury. Realistically, uh, no matter what we do, we're probably going to face some bumps and bruises along the way. I'm a firm believer, though, that a lot of our work is done up front, right? And what I mean by that is if, you know, I don't, I don't know what everyone's level is, but let's say you're a professional level. Let's look at my guy, Jake Gibb. He has a very clearly defined season in years that aren't 2020. Uh, and so he has also a very clearly defined off season in which he does a tremendous amount of what we call strength acquisition, power acquisition, okay, where he's trying to put up some heavy weights to not only build some muscle tissue, but strengthen his joints, strengthen all the kind of connective tissues and so forth, so that when it's season time and we don't have as many opportunities to get in the weight room and do all that kind of stuff that we like to do during the off season, we get the carryover effect of all that work we did in the off season that continues to support our body. Okay. In my opinion, that's the best way that we can go about preventing injury, so to speak, is <clears throat> strengthening ourselves in those moments when we're not, when we're not playing, when our dedication and our focus doesn't have to be on being on the court and trying to win volleyball matches. Now, is there one specific thing we should be doing? I don't think there's a right answer for that. Anything that is strengthening your legs, strengthening your shoulder, strengthening those joints and kind of the, the little muscles surrounding all your joints, uh, all of that stuff is wonderful, in my opinion. Um, and then maybe the only caveat is don't necessarily think that more is better, you know, we're working hard, but we're not working too excessively to where we get kind of some uh, counterproductive results. Thank you very much, Rav, for your question. I hope, hope we answered it. And uh, it's always easier to work out when it's sunny outside. So again, congratulations on being in San Diego. That concludes our final episode of the year 2020. Thank you so much to everybody who has watched us, supported us all year. In the spirit of giving, in the spirit of the holidays, in the spirit of Christmas, We'd like to do something special for our submissions this week and give each and every one of you a brand new Wilson Optics Volleyball uh, for Christmas. Hopefully that is the spark you need to ascend to your, your greatest game and hopefully we see you very, very soon on the AVP. Uh, my people will get in touch with your people. We'll reach out to you and get mailing addresses for you all. Uh, and again, we thank you so much for your support and We'll see you in 2021.